Okay, folks. Good afternoon. Welcome to the English session in this, this National Children's Culture Forum. Welcome everyone here. Welcome everyone online and later on tape. Um, nice to have you here. We have a three-hour session with one break. Um, we have presentations, uh, then we have commentary from our Nordic uh, network and a closing remarks also from there. But um, we also have some time for for brief brief reply on, on, on what you've heard. My name is Alexi Valta. I'm the uh, executive director of this uh, Association of Finnish Children's Cultural Centers. And I will now tell you a little bit about our network and, uh, and uh, children's culture and cultural education in Finland. Um, looking forward to all presentations today and especially the one at three because it's the world preview trailer that takes place at three o'clock, so don't, don't vanish. It's a movie trailer. I've heard so much about it, so it's nice to see that. Um, children's culture in Finland. Um, we have many professional children's cultural centers operating around Finland. Many of you are here. Um, we, we have at the moment 33 member organizations in our association. Um, there you can see and read the uh, funding that we have uh, from, from the government side. Um, most of the funding all comes from many sources, especially those uh, uh, NGOs that operate, uh, they, they, they are really based on projects and, and, and foundation funding. Um, so these 33 associations form this association. And, um, but, and in addition to us working, uh, there's many operators uh, that, that, that uh, are doing children's culture. In Finland, one key uh, uh, site or one key operator is the basic, uh, basic uh, uh, education of arts. That's comprehensive um, system um, for those who, who are taking arts maybe a, a bit more seriously and, and in the long term are looking for becoming maybe musicians or actors. Uh, that is curriculum based uh, uh, and it's uh, result oriented in many ways. Whereas our association's members operate uh, more on short term uh, workshops and, and, um, and maybe more with, with accesses, accessibility to everyone. Um, but of course, many operators, museums, theaters are also doing many, many wonderful things for, for children in Finland. And, and as you heard today already, the symphony orchestra here in this building is one of those. Uh, our association, um, uh, there's some, some uh, numbers behind what this network is made of, two million visits per year, more than 50 themes in culture and arts, and our kind of common ground is the Children's Culture Quality Handbook, which is our commitment that we will deliver our operations based on that. There you can see the aims of, of what we try to achieve and what we try to improve. Of course, raising awareness of children's culture is one major thing. Of course, the operating environment 
the funding and resources are key, key roles there. Uh, values of the association come from there. You probably saw it at the info desk also. Equality, equality, child orientation, and arts. So the, we were founded in 2015 by, by a group of, of children's cultural centers around Finland. And we've now grown quite a bit from that. Um, about us, we coordinate the biggest uh, art program for youth, art testers. You will hear more about that later. Um, of course, the, the, the place where we need to be when we want to achieve the whole generation of, of children or youth is, is schools. And one, one key way to do that is in enhance cultural education plans. And we operate the, and, and publish a nationwide portal of children's culture. Um, so equality and accessibility are in key role in our networks of, uh, activities. And, and school, again, is very, very vital. I was trying to explain to our Nordic friends a little bit about what happens in, in Children's Cultural Center. We have 33 absolutely different ones. Uh, and it's really hard to describe what, in general, our, our member, member organizations do. Um, each are individual, but quality and children's quality handbook are the kind of commitments that we do together. There's some uh, agenda for our international work. Um, many things are happening, newsletters, webinars, uh, project plans, projects overall. Um, Many, many really interesting uh, organizations we are part of. European Network of Children's Cult uh, sorry, European Network of Cultural Centers and the European Network of Observatories. So there's this ba uh, base for, for European cooperation as well. Uh, sustainable Development Guide, you heard this morning. Um, it will be published also in English later this year, and uh, another publication coming up is, is the Accessibility Guide for Art Education and Children's Cultural Centers. That will be also published in English. It's available in Swedish and, and Finnish downstairs. And of course, Art Testers as a kind of crown jewel of our cultural education plans is, is also something that's interested People are interested around uh, Europe and world as well, so some activities in English and internationally over there as well. You will hear later about Youth Learning Through Arts project from many of the key, key people in that project here. Uh, I won't spend too much time there, but maybe a little bit on cultural education plans and what, what is taking place um, in, in Finland and, and this year and next year are, are big years for us um, in developing and, 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 and starting new cultural education plans ar around Finland. And um, you, you can read, a lot, there's lots of text about cultural education plans, but it's, a, it's, a, it's usually made for grades one to nine, maybe even early, early childhood education as well. And it's an agreement with, with um, educational and cultural services and operators there. Um, what it gives for cultural operators, institutions and artists, it increases the visitor volumes 
widens the audience base, employs artists and art educators, of course, and it helps to direct the cultural production for a specific age group and educates the audiences of, of the future. And for schools, uh, cultural education plan is always uh, built around the curriculum. It supports the school curriculum and gives new ways of learning and new learning environments as well. Um, and it's, it's a equality and accessibility tool in, in each, each school as well because um, it, it doesn't matter if the teacher is not culturally or arts oriented because it will be provided to all schools and all, all children. Um, many things are happening, as I said. Um, the Ministry of Education and Culture is supporting uh, financing for intertwining project this year. Um, one is luckily ours. We, we are, our association and our members are doing uh, cultural education plans consultation and trying to help municipalities or small cities um, to build their own, own cultural education plan. Why small cities and municipalities is because the big ones already have them. But also we, we try to enhance the, the content of those existing cultural education plans. Uh, uh, now, the Concert Center Finland uh, uh, organizes uh, concerts, uh, mainly music concerts to schools, and, and uh, those concerts are now free due to this project for those municipalities who are willing to start building their cultural education plans. So it's in intertwining with our project in many ways. And then we have um, Culture Cooperative Ulu. There are a few people here, I think. Also from them, and they have cultural education plan agents who are, who are constructing and designing hands-on and key, how do you say it, keys. They give the keys for, for the, for the ready-made cultural education plan for the, for, the, for the city or municipality. So they, they are really taking it all the way uh, in helping, helping municipalities to achieve those plans. And then we have the Finnish National Gallery with their My Ateneum project. And they uh, are doing a project uh, virtual learning and virtual uh, workshop with, with uh, to 400 classes of fifth and sixth graders. So that also comes um, in hand with, with cu enhancing cultural education plans. So it's, it's a big, big year and, 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 uh, and a great achievement from the ministry that we should have results by the end of the year, next year. And uh, we are really, really happy and looking forward to the results and, and, uh, and uh, evaluation of, of, of the situation after that. We have, we, before we started these, these projects, we had cultural education plan in 114 uh, cities or municipalities in Finland, where we have 300 hundred of those and uh, at the moment we are closing 200 already so results are really really good and um, we are happy we are proud this is this is something really important we think for for the our purpose of of making arts and culture accessible for everyone in around everywhere in Finland so that's that's a that's a big thing for us as a network. Now, end of my discussion <laughs> and presentation, and we will go then to, yes, you too. <laughs>
we have now the sustainable uh, development and, uh, and the publication uh, coming up next with Christina and Janina. So we will mainly present this um, guidebook for sustainable children's culture now in English, but maybe a little bit can try, uh, dive a bit deeper. But again, I start with the team that as for us, the art and culture educators, uh, children and youth are our client, clients, and we try to uh, always bring up their rights uh, and then uh, their voice uh, through our methods, which are the art and culture education. And unfortunately, these times we are living in times where the, uh, uh, their, uh, uh, the children's right to good future is endangered. As, as we talk about this, uh, it's just loss of biodiversity, climate change, overconsumption of natural resources, uh, natural resources, it all threatens the future of, of, of human race. And uh, without a well-functioning well biosphere, us and the futures to come, the, uh, the generations in the future, they cannot live a safe and good life, which is, of course, the, what we hope for as people who work with children and youth. And we have an important role in um, uh, kind of articulating their rights, the children and youth, but also uh, kind of bringing their voice to be heard. And uh, th that's why this uh, sustainable development has been an important theme uh, for the members of the Association of Finnish Cult Children's Cultural Centers. We have started a working group for sustainable development last year, and we've had webinars, and there has been kind of this voice from the members that we should almost a riot for the children's and youth's right for a safe future. And that's kind of how this guidebook also got started. Yeah, and research also shows that uh, the depth of anxiety for many young people are really, really deep. Uh, the research that was published this fall shows that 75% uh, of the young people who were surveyed are thinking that the future is frightening. That's really terrible. And uh, nearly 60% of uh, young people felt very worried or, or extremely worried. So something has to be done. Uh, and as Christina said, we have done a lot, but this, um, uh, this guidebook will show you kind of ways to do uh, different things so that the um, sustainability will go throughout your everyday life, your teaching, your production, everything. And what did we do? Uh, we asked advice from and greetings and in, inspirational texts from Finnish experts. Uh, we got writings from university professors, environmental educators and teachers. Lots of wise words, lots of good, good words to all of us. Uh, we also collected case examples from our children's cultural centers. A lot of good things have been done uh, earlier and the knowledge and the practices should be shared. Uh, we also gathered ideas and actions from everyday sustainability, things you can do, do ev uh, every day uh, and uh, things you can share. Uh, also, uh, we tried to collect uh, thoughts on how the world could be saved through and with art and culture. Art, art is very powerful, as we all know, and uh, cultural educators are, uh, have many uh, useful skills uh, and knowledge that we can use in environmental education. Yes, exactly. So <clears throat> we now a little bit take a sneak peek to <clears throat> the content. <clears throat> And uh, first we dive into the everyday sustainability that we've named it. Uh, and always when we, of course there have been many studies may, um, made that, that uh, um, ah, sorry. <laughs> so maybe if I lift like three subjects, there, there are many questions. We try to think of questions that what are the uh, uh, 
specific uh, actions that can be done in children's cultural centers. Our members are very different. There are many kind of uh, uh, actors there, but uh, for example, the energy consumption and uh, travel and logistics is of course the straight <laughs> action that you can make to diminish your carbon footprint. So of course not all of our uh, organizations own their premises, but if you do, I know it's a big investment to change into um, uh, renewable energy, but it pays back in long run. And I can now proudly say that my own organization, for example, the museum in Sagalund, we have just now because the oil uh, system went down and then we had to make the big choice and now we went for the uh, earth uh, warm uh, system. So. Very proud of that. <laughs> it can be done. <clears throat> but then uh, also a very quick and easy change is to just start buying eco-label energy. Click like this and then it's done. And uh, it, that's a direct and a good impact. And of course, the just uh, then we should go through all our processes to think about how can we minimize the energy consumption. And especially then when it comes to travel and logistics, there are many parts where you can, we can do things more wisely. And if we go them system systematically through, so maybe we can think of our procedures so that they minimize always the impact. And then... I have, uh, maybe, then maybe I lift up the purchases because <clears throat> I've discussed with some other uh, children's cultural centers and there the, the impact is in that sense bigger because <clears throat> often the ecologically and socially sustainable choices made with purchases become visible also to our customers and the children. So that, that's why the positive impact can be even bigger that can, <clears throat> what can be the sustainability criteria for your purchases. Uh, uh, then maybe if even you make these competitive tendering cases that you should include the sustainability criteria and that. <clears throat> can, can it be, how do we, for example, minimize printed materials at events and exhibitions at the office? What all can be repaired and like uh, used, used again? What all can be by second hand? What, how can we recycle things? <clears throat> then we, when we serve food at our events, how do, do we favor plant-based, local, seasonal, organic, eco-certified products? <clears throat> <coughs> no, it's so, a lot can be done. Yes. <laughs> and then we go for this. I have to... <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, of course, there are many studies on how to make... <clears throat> um, the, what are the elements of effective environmental education? <clears throat> and... Uh, it, it, always the target is environmental responsibility or a citizen who is environmentally responsible. <clears throat> also this word eco-social sustainability is used nowadays a lot. That is even kind of bigger term. <clears throat> So the, the, the steps are that there, it, it includes environmental sensibility. <coughs> Sorry. Oh. <coughs> mm knowledge about environmental issues. Uh, no, I lose my <laughs> oh, no. <clears throat> Values and attitudes. <clears throat> but then also you have to uh, <clears throat> learn the skills and know that you can have an effect. So in empowerment is <laughs> important. <laughs> can you maybe... Uh, no? Okay. And here you can see the bicycle that is model of our Sorry. researchers that... Uh, <laughs> how everybody can do the uh, climate uh, education. Uh, this model is from four <coughs> environmental uh, or climate change educators from Finland. <coughs> and, uh, but we thought that for art and culture, we have to kind of pimp up <laughs> this sky bicycle a bit to bring out the <coughs> possibilities with art and culture education. So here's our magical <coughs> bicycle. Uh, all the values and identity and, and world picture, everything you can buy, uh, find in there, but there's the uh, plus things we can offer as an art education and cultural education uh, to the uh, environment, environmental education. Uh, I hope you can read they are really <laughs> small in the, in the right, but uh, the flag presents uh, possibility to show the way to others. We can be like the pioneers, we can do the important things, we can uh, be with our children in the front line. 
Uh, then there is the wing, the, the second one, uh, imagination skill. We can imagine new futures with the children by teaching them about the past and the present, and we can like imagine something completely new. We can use our uh, arts and imaginations to build our future. Then we can find uh, the fourth one, ability to make noise for, for the favor of the environment. We are good at making noise. We can dance, we can do music, we can do uh, pictures about nature and this planet. We can really, really make a noise. We can be activists and uh, do our part. And uh, we can help children and youth to um, uh, have their voices heard because it's their future. It's really personal for them what will happen in, in years to come. Uh, also, you can find the heart reflector. That's a really, really important thing to me, empathy. Uh, if, you, if you love nature, if you love animals, you will protect them. And that, that is the one thing we can uh, teach through art. Uh, children and you to love our nature. Do you want to? Uh, yes, <laughs> for example, because uh, I, I think uh, when you uh, read through environmental education studies, I always feel that the eyes are on us, yeah. that they are very much expecting the, some new ideas and uh, methods from creativity and arts and cultural education. For example, these, when they talk about these future skills, I think it's like r reading the, the <coughs> uh, for example, for drama education, they are the exact things that you practice with drama education. For example, this <coughs> persistence, collaboration, communication skills, <coughs> and then criti critical thinking, uh, resilience, and all these uh, kind of, uh, always throughout history, art has had a strong role in social and cultural change. So that's kind of, uh, when you make an artistic process, you kind of step out of the everyday life and in this kind of atmosphere it's possible to play, like Juha Hurmet discussed in the earlier. You can try things safely, you can take exactly the roles of others, even other species, maybe even uh, 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 other, but like uh, trees and so forth. <clears throat> and then and there is this... Um, uh, the rational thinking can be enriched with imaginative and uh, this unconscious materials, which is kind of the effect that this art culture has. And of course, thinking back, when, when I talk about from a museum perspective, it's yeah. uh, uh, when, when <clears throat> you go to a museum, you can think back that it hasn't always been like this, and this way you can also understand that we, can, we have the power to change the way the, fut the, way the futures look like. So the way to look back and look forward yeah. comes from culture. And, and as an <coughs> art educator, uh, we have the possibility to give a ride to those who can't pedal yet or who don't know how to pedal yet. So no worries, hop on, we can help you. So we can do this together with the uh, children and youth. Okay, yes. <laughs> and then we want to, because many guidebooks have been made in the past, and this is yet another one, but uh, the importance of this guidebook is that then we would actually use it as I, at this point, I uh, yeah, quoted Greta Thunberg from the Glasgow conference that they are so tired, the youth, of hearing all this blah, 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 and th then we have plants and beautiful words, but this is actually that we have to now look in the mirror, and we are the grown-ups who need to help, and we have to make and change things. Also, in our processes and our own work, everyone is the expert of their own field, and they know how to make uh, better choices, but then also helping the youth and being the environmental and sustainability educators <clears throat> in their own art form or children's cultural center. Yeah, and we can be activists, that's a really important thing to me. We can be activists for, for environment and nature, <coughs> and we have to be act activists for the children. They have a right to live in the future, so, so we have to protect them and act now. And um, we can uh, teach them the, how to take part. And uh, I want to te teach active citizens, people who will uh, defend things that are important to them and, and people who will act if they see something is wrong. 
and we are going towards that. And we want to challenge every one of you to do that also. Yes, maybe this was... Yeah, yes. think what you can do today, what, you, what idea do you take with you to home, and please act on it. So just don't talk about it, act, act on, on it. it. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>